All right. Now let us talk to the man who will be fighting on December 12th for the flyweight title, UFC 256. A man who we just saw this past Saturday at the UFC Apex defeating Brandon Royval in the feature prelim fight. A couple hours later, we find out he's going to turn around in three weeks and fight for the belt. It's the quickest turnaround for a champion and challenger in UFC title history. It's going down on December 12th in Vegas. It's the one and only Brandon, the assassin baby Moreno, kind enough to join us. Brandon, how are you? Yeah, I'm in. Fine. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks for the, for the space. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's great to talk to you. So I, I want to start here, Brandon. You fight on Saturday against Brandon Royval. Great win, great performance, and we shall talk about it. That happened at around 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, 6.45 p.m. in Las Vegas. Then three or so hours later, the flyweight title is on the line. Davison Figueredo defeats Alex Perez, and that's at around top of my head, let's say, 10 10 10 15 p.m pacific time less than two hours after that the news is out there that you're fighting davison for the title so let me ask you what happened like can you take us inside what exactly happened behind the scenes how did they approach you and how quickly did they get this done well man i mean that's why i say it's like almost magical you know because i finished the fight i i went to the to get some some interviews, I went to the media room. Uh, after that, we went to the hotel. Uh, our team and I uh, grabbed all our stuff, and then we we went to the house of my uh, or the house of my manager. Then I I was I was eating when I watched and I saw the fight. Like 15 minutes after the fight, uh, Jason House, my manager, comes with me with with his cell phone, and he say, "Hey, I have." I have a big man on on, cell, on the phone. Uh, he want to ask you if you are ready to, to fight in December 12th. I mean, obviously it was like weird, you know, for me because I make the account in my, with my fingers and like, hey man, it's three, it's three weeks from here. I mean, I can think just a little bit. Can I get some three minutes, at least three minutes to thinking about it? About it, I talked with my head coach and he said, man, you don't have injuries. You are ready. Let's go. It's the opportunity of your, of your life. And uh, here I am. No? I'm ready. So I would imagine you were excited. And I know that you wanted to be fighting for the title this past Saturday. But also, like you said, it's in three weeks. So are, do you have mixed feelings? Like, would you have preferred your first UFC title fight to come with a full training camp? Man, obviously, I, I prefer a, a, a complete training camp, camp, you know. Figueredo is a really, really tough opponent. He's, I mean, he's the flyweight champion, champion right now. And in his last fight, he looks amazing and, uh, uh, and really, really evolved in, in every single of his matchups. So that I prefer a, a, a real training camp. But it is what it is. And... Again, I don't have any injuries, serious injuries from this fight against Brandon Royval. I'm ready. I'm ready even the even uh, before the fight with, with Royval. So we have the same situation. I mean, Figueredo fought uh, the same car like me. So it's the same for us. It's interesting because um, the first episode of UFC Embedded that came out leading up to UFC 255, you're featured on it and you were very excited about that. You're at your manager, Jason House's house. And uh, you're talking about the cookies and everything. And you were saying how it was hard for you not to eat the cookies. But then he said, after the fight, you can have all the cookies you want. You can have any meal you want. But now you're about to fight for the belt in, you know, less than three weeks. So are you even able to, you know, have a day or so where you can have a cheap meal and go crazy? Man, Saturday, I, I ate, ate very badly. Badly, you know, like burg a burger from Shake Shack, some tacos. But comes next day and start again with the diet you know i'm i'm like i'm like right now i'm like 140 so it's it's not too bad it's, it's actually it's perfect and my la my last uh cut weight in this moment i was in like 145 so right now i have uh, five pounds less so uh, amazing the weight is not a problem for me 
Okay. Um, obviously, you're the challenger. You have to take the opportunity when it's presented to you. Are you surprised that he's turning around so quickly, that he's not going home, he's staying in Las Vegas, and that he's doing this so fast? Were you surprised when you heard that he was in? Uh, absolutely, yes. I mean, I have too much respect for Figueiredo, you know. Other other champs, you know, never defend his title, never try to make a statement in his own division. And Figueiredo take the fight with just three weeks for try to be prepared and, and try to make way again. So I have too much respect for him. So you have respect for him. I'm wondering if you're impressed by him because what he's been doing, especially this year, you know, beating guys like Benavidez, beating Alex Perez, the way in which he's doing it, drawing attention to the flyweights, his fighting style, his strength, his look, everything. Do you think that this guy is, is, is as special as everyone is saying that he is, or do you think he's a lot of hype? What do you think? No, he's a special, you know. I mean, I know I can be that this guy, you know. I'm the real uh, contender of this division, you know. I don't know why uh, UFC take Alex Perez for the title fight first than me. But now I have the opportunity to, sh to shock the world, you know. I know he's special. I know he's powerful. He's explosive, blah, blah, blah. But, man... I will, we'll see, we'll see the fight, you know, every single uh, people around the world, I will say something ab about my fight, you know, uh, uh, for example, about Askarov, they say something like, he's amazing, uh, Brandon Moreno uh, will be uh, chucking out from all the world, uh, and then Kaikara Frank, amazing uh, uh, striking, Formiga, amazing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but I won every single of, that fi of those fights, so we'll see what happened in December 12th. I don't want to revisit the whole Cody Garbrandt getting a title shot and then picking Alex Perez over you because it's now old news. But one thing that I did want to ask you about that you didn't really address in the buildup because it was clear you were upset that they chose Garbrandt over you. And then, of course, you're scheduled to fight Alex Perez and then they chose uh, Perez over you, which kind of blew my mind if I'm being honest. But here's the one part that <laughs> hasn't been talked about. Both you and Alex Perez are represented by the same manager, Jason House. And so you say that you don't understand why they picked him over you. Surely you know the guy who cut the deal. So did you have a discussion with him? Like, hey, why did they pick your other client over me? Why didn't they go with me? I was the guy with the more impressive wins. I mean, you have the insight there, right? I mean, he represents both of you. Yes. I mean, I was very mad in that in that moment uh, with everybody. You know, I'm, I'm very... I'm very serious and I, I never try to, to make some, you know, posts in, in Instagram or something like that. But I was very mad I'm, and I was very confused and talked with, with Jason, you know, and he said the company uh, took the decision to get to take uh, Alex Perez for the title shot. I, I even right now, I can't understand what happened in that night when I don't know, Mick Maynard and, and Dana White talks about the next uh, uh, flyweight uh, title fight. But, you know, Jason House make everything perfect with me since I'm, I'm start to work with him. So I have all my confidence with, he, with him right now. So was what I was and I'm ready right now. Okay. I want to rewind the tape and go to the beginning here because I think a lot of people are going to start to learn a little more about you now because you're fighting in this big fight for the belt and it's UFC 256, all this stuff. You grew up in Tijuana, right? Did I say that correctly? Tijuana? Tijuana. Tijuana? Close. Tijuana. 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 Tijuana, Mexico, of course. Tijuana, Mexico. Yes. And correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and this is incredible. This is very exciting, especially as a father of three young kids who, who love this particular thing. Your family grew up, you grew up in a family that makes piñatas, right? Sir, yes, sir. Amazing. How did they get into this business? How did this start? Your, your family business is the piñata business. This is incredible. They bring so much joy to so many kids. What's the backstory? You know, my, my, my family started in Tijuana, make his own company. They right now uh, make the piñatas here in Mexico, and then and then my, my father uh, has a like um, a trailer and go to San Diego, Los Angeles. Tijuana is 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 border with uh, California, with San Diego, you know. Yeah. So he crossed the border and sell the piñatas in in San Diego, Los Angeles, and around of, of these cities. Um, 
And that's uh, and that's why they, my my parents give me everything. To be honest, I, I'm not I'm not the guy who who had like problems in, when I was a, a kid because my my parents worked too much to give me everything, you know. But I grow up watching all his job and I'm watching uh, uh, wa watching them work very very hard every single day, and I think that's why that's why I have like a, this kind of hard work mentally every day. Wow, and, and did you make the piñatas as well as you grew older? Yes, in some point, yes, I'm starting to work with, with my parents in, in, the, in the family company. Uh, I, after, then I went to the, the Ultimate Fighter, uh, went to the UFC and stopped the, the, the work in, in the company. But be, before that, I, I was working with, with them and more because I'm, I, I had my, my first daughter when I was uh, 20, years, uh, 20 years old. So I'm starting to work for that. Is the business still running? Yes, 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 yes. What is the key to a good piñata? What's, what's, what, what needs to be done to make it a strong and successful? Because, you know, sometimes you buy one and it's a little flimsy. You, 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 you hit it once, it breaks. You know, what's the key to it? <laughs> I mean, at first, I think it's practice, good materials. Mm -hmm. And, you know, practice and good materials, that's it. Okay. Uh, I understand also you grew up as a, as a big fan of cartoons, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Legos. I mean, you're, Dragon you're, you're, C, uh, yes. Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon. Uh, I love it. All that. The Scooby, man, I, I have like a lot of uh, uh, frames of that kind of cartoons. More, I think, more for Dragon Ball C. Okay. So the, the anime, as they say. Um, were you a big Lucha Libre fan as well? Not really, to be honest. Actually, even right now, I I never uh, been in a, a lucha libre arena, for example. Come no. on, really? Really? I promise. You're missing out. Triple A, MLL. This is a big, you know. Big, I big... feel really bad for that. Yeah. I feel really bad for that. But I I never went before. Maybe somebody in in your audience can invite me if he li uh, they live in Mexico. You never know. Uh, before one of the UFC events in, in Mexico City, I think it was UFC 180, uh, some, some journalists okay. and I went to, I think it was a AAA uh, event on a Friday night. You know, that's the traditional night, right, for the wrestling. And it was such a great experience to be there. It was amazing. Yeah. So if you ever have the opportunity, I, I highly suggest it. I, I also heard you say that you want to be, you know, you want to do for MMA in Mexico what Julio Cesar Chavez did for boxing in Mexico, right? So that would say to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, did you grow up a big boxing fan? Yes. I mean, I'm starting to watch, you know, like, obviously I never uh, watched it for the, um, Julio Sal Chavez, but I grew up watching uh, the the first fights of Canelo Alvarez or of the career of Juan Manuel Marquez, the end of the career of, of, of Terrible Morales. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, influence from these amazing boxers. And obviously boxing has such, you know, strong roots in Mexico. Right. Why did you go in the path of mixed martial arts and not boxing? I think it was just a, was a casualty because I meet uh, first uh, the mixed martial arts. I'm tr I tried to get some uh, good training. I, fi I remember I finished my elementary school. And before to go to the middle school, I I, uh, I meet the, the mixed martial arts. I try to get some, you know, karate or or capoeira. But uh, I meet the mixed martial arts. My mother get the, the the cell phone of my head coach, and that's it. I went to the gym. I, I get too much love for this sport, for the for the art of this amazing uh, uh, sport and. That's it. When you were 12 years old, right? That's when you started? Exactly. Uh, I, 2006. 2006, you were 12 years old. Wow. So you're born in, uh, what's my math? Uh, 1994? You're born in 1994? Almost. 93. Okay. Wow. That is amazing. <laughs> um, at what point did you decide that this was going to be your job? Because I also believe that you used to tell your parents you wanted to be a lawyer, right? That was the initial dream, correct? Yeah, yes, but that was like a long time ago. 
you know when i when i when i grow up and i was in the in the high school i tried to get some uh, career of nutritionist mm. here in tijuana actually before to go to the developer program to the ufc uh, for latino america in albuquerque new mexico i tried to get uh, some a good uh, college in Mexico uh, to be a nutritionist. But then UFC called me, went to the uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I, I, I stayed there like five, five months. When I go back to Tijuana, I decided to, to, to put everything to be a, a professional athlete. Mm. So, so you start your career in 2011, and it doesn't go, I mean, yeah three and three to start your career, right? Three wins, three losses. So it's not really going great. Did you start to have doubts about your future in the sport? Uh, yes, man. Too much doubts about my performance, you know? But I was very young uh, and I started my career in 135 pounds. I, I mean, very young, skinny, not too much power, to be honest. Uh, I go I go to the 125 pounds and start my success in the, in my career, you know? Since then, you've only lost twice. So obviously a lot has changed for you, but I think your big break came when you were on the Ultimate Fighter and getting that kind of exposure that led to the UFC. That experience for you, being in the house with all those other guys, I know it didn't end up the way you wanted it to, but just the experience overall, do you have fond memories or did you not enjoy it? I enjoyed every single moment in that house, you know, it was very, very hard to stay really far from uh, my family. But I, I remember uh, before to go to the to the ultimate fire house, I talked with my with my head coach and, and he says something like, um, hey Brandon, if you uh, lost in the competition, I mean don't worry, it's it's fine. You're very young. You try just to learn a lot a lot of your uh, partners, a lot of your new coaches. And that moment, my 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 coach was Joseph Benavides who I, I love too much, that guy. So I, he, he gave me a lot of his time and showed me a lot of skills, a lot of different uh, techniques. And I evolved too much in, in that competition. When you were initially released by the UFC, and I believe 2018, if I would have yes. told that guy two years later, two and a half years later, you'd be fighting for a UFC title, would you have believed me? <laughs> Man, I... That always was the goal, you know? I mean, obviously, if you talk with me in that moment, I was very sad and say something like, man, just shut up. Don't <laughs> piss me, please. But, so, you know, sometimes I don't want to even uh, wake up and get up to the bed to go training, but I just wake up, get up to the bed, and went to, tra- to, the, to the gym and get some amazing training. And that's why I'm here now, you know, because I'm very persistent. I'm very disciplined. And it is what it is in the life, not just in the martial arts. I mean, it's in the life, I think so. So when you were released, did they tell you you were released because they were getting rid of the flyweight division or is it because of your performances or another reason? No, they, they say about, you know, about the division. It was very easy for them to cut my head because I lost two fights in a row. Mm-hmm. So that combination was very bad for me. Did you consider walking away from the sport after that? Uh, no, not to, not to be honest. I mean, I, again, I was very disappointed of my performance of, of my life in that moment. But af- after UFC released me, I tried to get some opportunities in other companies. But then I, I meet uh, Jason, my, my manager, and he makes an amazing work with me, you know, get the fight in LFA for the championship. Uh, I won that fight, and then I go back to the, to the UFC. Right. Uh, you, you have two or three children? Three. Three The now. last one born in September. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Three girls? Thank you. Three girls, exactly. Three girls. Amazing. Six, two, and, and one and a half months. When you were out of the UFC, I, I saw an interview with you and you said that you were very down because of the fact that you were no longer in the UFC, but also something, did something happen to your daughter where you needed money from your parents for, for doctor's bills and yes, things like that? What happened? My daughter has like a problem in his stomach. 
So she needed like a, a, a surgery. Wow. She needed a, a, a surgery. And in that moment, I don't have money, money, you know. And then my parents give me some, uh, uh, give me some money for the for the surgery, you know. My my second daughter born, uh, UFC released me. You know, a lot of bad things in my life in that in my life in that moment. Wow, is your daughter okay now? Yeah, she's amazing. She's so happy and she's crazy right now. Great. And so it, it just, you know, the reason I wanted you to go over this with us and explain some of these things is because I think it makes the moment that much bigger because here you are on three weeks notice getting a title fight. You've been through so much, so many ups and downs. And in and, and now less than three weeks, you're about to fight for the belt. Is it hard to like comprehend? Like, is it almost surreal for you that this is happening after everything that you've been through? Man, completely surreal. I mean, this life is a kind of crazy roller coaster from six flags i don't know i try to watch behind my shoulders and watch and watch all this crazy journey of, of my life i mean i sometimes i i can't even believe it all all my life but you know what i deserve this i know i deserve it sometimes a lot of people uh, put less attention in in his own uh, discipline on in his own persistence, but man, I know I deserve this moment in my life. On Tuesday, they came out with the poster, right? The UFC put it out there of you and him together. What I mean, that must have been. I saw you posting it on your Instagram too. That must have been. You know, you're standing next to the champ. In three weeks, you could be the champ. That must have been a cool moment, right? Man, the moment of my life. You know, again, I I will win the, that title, and after that, I need new targets, new goals. But I, I've been working of that in, in almost 10 years. Mm. So it's, it's amazing. Have you allowed yourself over the last couple of days to think about what it will feel like when Dana White puts the belt around your waist and, 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 and your life has changed forever as UFC champion? Do you let yourself think about that? Yeah, man, I love it. I always try to, to watch that moment in my, in my mind. You know, always. I try to be focused in that moment, you know. The state I was ready for that moment to carry the, the bell on my waist. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, he's looked really good as of late. In your opinion, what's the key to beating Davis and Figueredo? I mean, I know he's powerful. I know he has power in his right hand. His Brazilian jiu-jitsu is amazing. I, I need to be very explosive. I need to be very fast. I need to put some respect in the fight because I think his last opponents uh, uh, be very careful about his abilities, mm. you know? Obviously, I need to be very careful of the Figueiredo because he is really dangerous. But I don't I, I don't want to respect him too much in the fight, you know? I, I need to show I can bring a really good uh, show in that fight. So I need to be fast. I need to be exp- I need to show some respect, but I think the most important thing is put my messing and hurt in that fight. Yes. Uh, and there's a great history of, of, of Mexican fighters and, and the heart that you guys possess. Um, just curious, he has a fun, you know, persona and look, do you, do you feel like he's too cocky? What, what do you make of him with the glasses and the hair and the shirt <laughs> and everything? Man, no, he, I mean, I think he's trying to sell tickets for the boss. Yeah. And, and it's fine, you know, he, he's trying to be a, a trash talker. It's crazy. I don't like too much that kind of attitude, but it is what it is. For me, it's never personal. For me, it's, I, I need to get that bell, not for beat uh, Figueredo. I need to get that bell to change for, for change the life of my family. And mm. that's it. How do you think you beat him? Ooh, maybe third and, and fourth round, you know, after a really good matchup against him, after a really good exchange, exchanges. Uh, but maybe, I don't know, knockout, submission, uh, whatever, whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, two last things. Why do they call you Assassin Baby? My first, my, my pro debut was in 2011. The commentator just gave me that nickname. And the people start to call me in, in that way. 
And at, at first, I don't like too much the nickname, uh-huh. nickname but stay with me. And, and right now, it's like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it works. It's memorable. And I hear that you are a... It works, uh, I mean... Are you an avid collector of uh, Lego and Funk Pop dolls? Yes, sir. I have too much toys here. <laughs> One more reason why I need to win that bell is because I need a, a, a bigger house. You know, I have three kids and too much Legos and Funkos. So I need rooms. I need more rooms. Which is your favorite Lego? Uh, I love Marvel. But actually, for, for the same reason, I, I, I have a... A small house. I can right now. I can't buy too much Legos because mm-hmm. are really big. So I'm I'm just waiting for get some money, buy a new house, and then start to buy more more stuff. So how <laughs> often are you putting together Legos? Like buying them and putting them together. How often do you do this? How, how often? Yeah. Man, it depends. You know, depends the Lego, depends the time, depends everything. But you, you do it a lot. Yeah, like uh, once every two or three weeks. Okay. Maybe. And and what about right uh, now? Yeah, yeah. What about a funk pop doll? What's your favorite one? All time great. Anime. I have a you know Naruto? Te gusta na- do, do you like Naruto? Uh not really, but I respect it, sure. <laughs> okay, so that's my favorite funk pop. Okay. Naruto Hokage from uh, the Boruto series. Wow. I love it. I love a man who has all these uh, kind of quirky interests. You certainly do. And I respect it greatly. And I love the fact that you're getting this title fight. Dare I say, Brandon, you should have gone the title fight this past Saturday. It didn't work out that way, but I think it makes for a better story now that you're getting it three weeks after your big win. So uh, the universe has a funny way of working itself out for, for good people. And congratulations to you for getting the fight. And good luck to you in preparation for the title fight. Brother, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for, for your time. I know this is a kind of Cinderella man history, but it, it's part of my of uh, the uh, the game plan of my life, and, and I'm and I'm ready to get all the challenge the challenge of the future. Good luck, my friend. Us, brother. Have a good day. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.